Good evening, and welcome to tonight's Zoning Board of Appeals virtual meeting. You are all here tonight seeking relief from the Smithtown Zoning Ordinances, and it's our job to try to help you achieve the relief you are requesting whenever possible. It's up to you to provide this board with precise and accurate information so we can make a decision based on the facts presented. This board must consider the five area variance considerations in order to render a decision, and they are as follows. Number one, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties will be created by the granting of the variance. Number two, whether the benefits sought by the applicant can be achieved by some, means, some method feasible for the applicant to pursue other than the area variance. Number three, whether the requested area variance is substantial. Number four, whether the proposed variance will have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood or district. And number five, whether the alleged difficulty was self-created, which consideration shall be relevant to the decision of the board, but shall not necessarily preclude the granting of the variance. Procedures for tonight's meeting. Cases will be called in the order they are advertised. After your case is announced by Mr. Donatio, the moderator will connect you to the meeting so you can present your case to the board. Once you have completed your presentation, if anyone on the board or in the planning department has any questions, they will be asked. Then any interested party who would like to speak on this case will be given one opportunity to do so. Then the applicant will be given the opportunity to respond to any questions and concerns after which the case will be closed. Once the public hearing is closed, no further information will be accepted concerning the case. You can contact the planning department after 12 p.m. tomorrow for the status of your, of your case. We do have two adjournments tonight. The first adjournment is case number 18650, Michael Ferry. That has been adjourned to April 12th. And the next case is case number 18680, Maria Riaz. That case has been adjourned to April 26th. Okay, Blaze. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The first case on the agenda tonight is case number 18652, Kevin Morton, 10 Pine Ridge Drive, Smithtown. The location of the property is the west side of Pine Ridge Drive, 131 feet south of MacArthur Lane. The property is zoned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum rear yard from 75 feet to 57 feet for a proposed 384 square foot covered rear porch. Could I have the applicant, please? Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can. Could you just uh, introduce yourself? Uh, state your name and address, please. Sure. My name is Kevin Martin, and my address is 10 Pine Ridge Drive in Smithtown. All right. New York, Thank New you. York 1, 177. Yep. Right. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, you can tell us why you're here today. Um, just uh, my wife and I are looking to have a screened-in porch built in our backyard. Um, so we're requesting a variance and just as the gentleman stated, it's to reduce the minimum rear yard from 75 feet to 57 feet. Um, and the proposed porch is to be 384 square feet with electric. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to be heard on this application? If you would like to speak on an application, please hit the raise hand button under the reactions tab at the bottom of the screen. And right now, Mr. Chairman, I'm not seeing any hands. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, could I have a motion to close the application, please? I'll move. 
Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Kevin. You too. The next case on the agenda, case number 18675, Rahul Sarana, 11 Shaker Ridge Lane in Comac. The location of the property is the east side of Shaker Ridge Lane, 168 feet north of Heather Crescent. The property is zoned R10. The applicant is requesting variances to reduce the minimum rear yard from 50 feet to 47 feet, to reduce the total side yards from 28 feet to 27 feet, or proposed second story, 262 square foot settlement. Uh, could I have the applicant, please? Yes, yes this hi, is Rahul Sarana. And yes, hi, good evening. This is Kate McHenry with Long Island Permits, the expediter. Oh, okay, w one second. Uh, the applicant, please. Uh, Sir? Rahul? Rahul, that would be you. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, can, yes, can this is Rahul state, Surana from 11 you, Shaker Ridge Lane. What, can you just state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, Rahul Surana, 11 Shaker Ridge Lane, Comac, New York, 11725. Right, thank you. Would you like this lady to speak on your behalf? Yes, please. Okay, fine. Uh, good evening. Kate good evening. McHenry. Kate McHenry with Long Island Permits. All right, and Raul, just... uh, mute his uh, phone now. Sure, I will. Thank you. Can you just spell spell your last name so we get it correct for the record, please? Sure. M C H E N R Y. Fine. Right, thank you. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. Good evening. Uh, we are here before you requesting permission to construct a proposed fourteen by twenty one irregular rear sunroom addition and a three by three platform with steps to grade. The proposed work, if granted, would hold a combined total side yard of 27 feet, where 28 feet is permitted, and a rear yard setback of 47 feet, where 50 feet is required. Um, the proposed sunroom, if granted, would not be heated or habitable. I would like to point out that although the sunroom is 14 feet deep, it is irregular and the cantilever leaves it only 11 feet on the north side. In order to cut it back to three feet to bring us into compliance would leave us only eight feet and too small to be utilized as it was intended. In addition, if we cut the stairs back the one foot needed, it would leave the stairs too narrow. I have submitted for the board's consideration pictures of the subject property, an aerial of the subject property, as well as an aerial of the neighborhood. We believe the relief we are seeking is minor and if granted would be keeping with the nature and character of the surrounding properties and would have no negative impact on the neighborhood. I welcome any questions the board may have. Okay, thank you. Does anyone in the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. No. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'm not seeing any hands raised. All right, thank you. Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. You, you too. <laughs> the next case on the agenda, case number 18678. Bonnie Meehan Levekis, uh, Levek Sex. Sorry if I mispronounced it. 56 Berg Avenue, Kings Park. The location of the property is the south side of Berg Avenue, 145 feet east of Gold Street. The property is owned R10. The applicant is requesting variances to reduce the minimum side yard from 12 feet to 6 feet, to reduce the minimum rear yard from 50 feet to 47 feet for proposed 261 square foot basement addition, 261 square foot first floor addition, and a 42 square foot rear deck, adding to a lawful non-conforming structure. Can I have the Good applicant, evening. please? Good evening, Chairman and members of the board. Christina Fry, an attorney with offices at 7 Pine Ridge Drive, Smithtown, New York, on behalf of Bonnie Mian Hlavicek. 
uh, 56 Berg Avenue. This is a proposed addition to relocate a kitchen uh, 12 feet further back from its current location. At the moment, there is no dining room. It's, it's um, a semi-eating kitchen. They need more room in the home for their growing family. Um, it is already a non-conforming, a lawful non-conforming structure. And we're requesting to reduce the minimum side yard from 12 feet to six feet. Um, we have, as you can see from that plan there, we have stepped the um, plan in slightly so that we didn't need to ask for a greater amount than six feet. It's an R10 district. The addition is minimal. It's limited to one story. Um, the reason for its location in that corner is because that's where the current kitchen already exists with the current plumbing. To relocate it elsewhere it would be behind the bedrooms and block the egress windows for the bedrooms. The side yard existing currently is 8.3 feet. And as I mentioned, we stepped in the addition slightly off the side there. Um, the, there's no room on the property to add elsewhere, as I mentioned, um, so it cannot be achieved by an, an alternative. And any adverse effect on the environment would be remedied by a series of gutters and leaders to dry wells to contain any water runoff. And of course, the addition here is proposed um, therefore, it was not created by the applicant or former owner. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Does any, anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank, thank you. you. No question. No. Uh, planning? No, thank you. No. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to be hold? Uh, <laughs> anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'm not seeing any hands raised. All right, thank you, Jeff. Do you have a motion to close the application? I'll move. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening, all. You too. Thanks. The next case on the agenda, case number 18679, Cliff Brzezuski. 42 Ritchie Court North. <laughs> the location of the property, the northwest corner of Ritchie Court North in Carroll Lane. The property is zoned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback on Ritchie Court North from 50 feet to 42 feet for a proposed 110 square foot roof over stoop. Now the applicant, please. Good evening. Can is my video? Oh, hold on one second. There we go. Um, Christopher Ang. My address is 93 Main Street, West Sable, New York, 11796. I am the representative for the applicant. Okay. Is the applicant here? No. Do we have a power of attorney? No, we do not. We're not going to be able to hear the case if we don't have power of attorney. Correct, Mr. Uh, Chairman. What's that, Martin? Okay. Correct, Mr. Chairman. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, I would, didn't know I needed a power of attorney over the case. I'm, my apologies. Or is the applicant close by? You can call them, have them log it. in. Uh, do you, do you want to we can move, off? We can move on to some other cases. Okay. If you if you can get a hold of the applicant and have them log on with you, I just need their permission for you to speak on their behalf. And then okay. you can do the case. If you can't get a hold of them, what we'll do is we'll have to postpone it until April 26th. Let me um let me give them a call now. I, I think I'll be able to get in touch with them. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right, Blaze, you want to move on to the next case? Sure, moving on. The next case on the agenda, case number 18681, Kakut LLC, 1 Dell Place, Hapag. The location of the property is the southeast corner of Dell Place and Rainbow Drive. The property is owned R15. The <coughs> applicant is requesting variances to reduce the minimum front yard from 45 to 31 to reduce the minimum rear yard setback 
uh, on Rainbow Drive from 60 feet to 55 feet to permit environmentally sensitive land to be altered where depth of groundwater is less than 10 feet for a proposed 359 square foot sunroom addition. Can I have the applicant, please? Hi, good evening. Christina Brobin, Morano Expediting. I do have power of attorney on file, agent for the applicant, Claudia Valson, also known as Kakut LLC. Correct. I, I see the power of attorney. Great. Thank you. So we're requesting permission for a proposed sunroom, 19 feet by 18 feet, 10 inches, holding a rear yard setback of 55 feet instead of the required 60 and a front yard setback of 31 feet instead of the required 45. The proposed sunroom will not encroach any further into the front yard setback off of Rainbow Drive than the original dwelling. That setback has already been established. Uh, groundwater was encountered at 7.6 feet below grade, which automatically triggers a variance for environmentally sensitive lands. However, uh, there is uh, no anticipation of issues with construction as it is a one story structure and the house itself has existed for many years uh, without any issues whatsoever. The proposed rear yard setback is in keeping with other homes in the area. Based on uh, just a review of the aerial, it appears that there are many additions uh, which also encroach into the rear yard similar to what we're proposing. And the request is not substantial as it's only 9% relaxation from the code. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Hey, thank you. Is there anyone on the board that has any questions on this application? No, thank no, you. Thank you. No, of course. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to be heard on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'm not seeing any other hands raised. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, we do have uh, Cliff Brzezewski. I'm uh, sorry? Cliff Brzezewski just joined the call, uh, the applicant for 18679. Right. Okay. Let me just close out this case, please. Okay. Okay. Since no one in the audience, there's no one in the audience like to speak on this half, on this case, uh, can I have a motion to close the application, please? I'll move. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. All right. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now we can go back, please. Yes, we can. Case number 18679, Cliff Brzezewski, 42 Ritchie Court North, St. James. The location of the property in the northwest corner of Ritchie Court North and Carroll Lane. The property is zoned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard setback on Ritchie Court North from 50 feet to 42 feet for a proposed 110 square foot roof over stoop. Fine. Can I have the applicant, please? Yes, sir. Can you just state your name and address for the record, please, sir? Uh, Clifford Brzezewski, 42 Ritchie Court North, St. James. Right, thank you. Would you like this gentleman to speak on your behalf? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. Christopher Ang, uh, 93 Main Street, West Sayville, New York, 11796. Uh, on this property, we are proposing a covered front portico that's going to reduce the front yard setback from 50 feet, the required 50 feet, down to uh, 42 feet. Um, the covered portico is just going to be uh, a covered entry, and the owner would not um, would agree not to ever make this living space. We, uh, we feel that the, uh, the relaxation is um, not substantial and it's in uh, keeping with the character of the neighborhood. Um, and I would just like to note that the, the existing house is set at 50 feet and the only thing that's going to be encroaching is the covered entry or uh, portico on, the, on the, uh, the front of the house. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? I'm not seeing any hands raised at this time, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you, Jeff. 
Uh, can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. The next case on the agenda is case number 18682, Samantha Ackerson, 79 Oakside Road, Smithtown. The location of the property is the northeast corner of Oakside Road and Landing Avenue. The property is owned R43. The applicant is requesting variances to reduce the minimum front yard setback on Landing Avenue from 60 feet to 19 feet, to reduce the minimum rear yard from 100 feet to 55 feet for a proposed 1,260 square foot second story addition, and to reduce the front yard setback on Landing Avenue from 60 feet to 10 feet for a proposed detached garage. I have the applicant, please. Good evening again, Christina Bravin, Morano Expediting, agent for the Ackerson. I have a power of attorney on file. Yes, I see that. Okay, go right ahead. Thank you. All right, so our request this evening is for a proposed second story addition holding a front yard setback of 19 feet off of Landing Avenue instead of the required 60 feet, a rear yard setback of 55 feet instead of the required 100 feet, and a reduced front yard setback from 60 feet to 10 feet for a proposed detached garage. The original dwelling itself does not conform to the required setbacks for the zone. The additions to the home will not encroach any further into the front and rear yard. So these setbacks have been established. And um, you can see from the aerial prior, this is a very unique lot due to the topography and the vegetation. Uh, the location of the attached garage uh, where we're proposing it is most ideal. The proposed garage will take be in place of the existing driveway that runs along Landing Avenue. The owner has actually changed the address to Oakside Road. Uh, it was formerly 409 Landing Avenue. And the entrance to the home was from Landing Avenue, which is a very heavily traveled area uh, and where the road curbs. It's a little dangerous to get up that driveway and out safely. So the best uh, solution for this was to enter the property through Oakside and pull straight up into the garage. Uh, with the location of the existing pool and the vegetation and the grade, uh, we will not be able to place the, uh, this drive, uh, garage, excuse me, to the right side of the driveway. It has to go to the left side. Um, again, from the aerial, you can see that this is a main road. So there'll be no adverse impact um, to any neighboring properties across uh, Oakside Road is a cemetery. So again, no adverse impact to any neighboring properties. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Uh, yes, uh, they're planning on building this garage in the driveway that's there now, is that correct? Right, so the current access and curb cut is on Landing Avenue, just behind where you see the garage proposal. Okay, right there, yes, correct. So that will be closed up and no longer right. utilized and uh, they'll revegetate when the you know climate is right and the construction is completed if the board approves this. And then the entrance would be only off of Oakside Road through the existing curb cut and the existing driveway. Okay. Is there any way that garage can be moved eastward? I mean, 10 feet off of landing is awful close. Well, now that's for the property line. So remember there is some um, additional land and space until the actual roadway. I believe it's another eight, eight and a half feet from our calculations when we were at the site. So essentially it's 18 feet to the rear of the garage from the roadway itself. So your answer to my question is no. I don't know that moving it any closer just because of the location of the house, the vegetation, um, the pool, and the existing driveway, they'd like to utilize it as mo mo you know, like most of it as they can without having to rip it up and repave. Okay. So now, locating they, they, it at that exact angle would be the most ideal. 
Okay. Um, just south of where you this garage is proposed, there's numerous trees. You're not going to take any of those trees down, are you? No, none. None. In fact, they will look to plant more trees along the back of the garage if this is approved. And once construction is completed and the ground settles, they want to revegetate anything that has to be touched or actually just um, uh, revegetated in that area from closing up that curb cut and driveway. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone yeah. else on the board have any uh, questions on this application? No, thank uh, you. I do. Um, Ms. Robin, can, can you explain the reasoning that it cannot go on the right-hand side of the house map? Maybe you could pull up that uh, photo of the front of the house again. Is there a reason that it cannot go on the right-hand side? Maybe it'd be better if you showed the elevation. Why don't you show, um, the site, show the site plan? Yeah, the site plan. There you go. The, the area where it shows new pavers, there's, there's, there seems to be plenty of property over there, and we wouldn't have to grant such a substantial variance. So there's a pool there. So it would be right in front of the pool, and it would compromise um, the construction of the pool if they were to put the driveway there. They'd also have to turn. It's very steep, and this gives them the most space so that they can properly, you know, um, back in or out of the driveway. Um, also, turn the car around, get into the garage, get out of the garage. If they put it right in front of the pool, it's very steep over the, in that in that area. This is the most level area that they could find on the property without having to regrade substantially. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have any questions? No, thank you. No, no. thank you. Uh, planning? Just a few comments, Mr. Chairman. So as you're aware, we were there this morning to do a site inspection of the, uh, the property. And going up the driveway from Oakside Road, there is a rather steep incline. The property is, ex is uh, existing with steep slopes, both on Oakside Road and Landing Avenue. Uh, as you crest the driveway in front of the house and you look toward Landing Avenue, the driveway starts to go back downhill again. So there's a slope. So number one, the concern would be that obviously if you're doing any construction in that area, uh, having to put a foundation in the ground, you're obviously going to have to do some cutting and regrading and refilling and possibly some uh, retaining walls, which we don't have any plans or proposals for. The second thing is, is that it is on uh, steep slopes on the corner of the landing and Oakside. And there would be a concern that number one, the extra building, the runoff from the roof, if there's no way of putting in a dry well can, a water containment system, that you have the potential for water runoff onto Landing Avenue and also onto Oakside Road. Uh, the third would be, I'm not really sure if in fact it can be built without taking out any of the mature trees that are already existing there. But if you were to start removing any of the existing trees, which are quite mature, you could possibly destabilize the slopes that are there, which could cause stormwater runoff, erosion, and other issues. And lastly, uh, to my knowledge, I've driven down Landing Avenue many, many times. I've never seen a home or an, an, a detached garage along Landing Avenue that's set back 10 feet from the property line. So you have a, a visual impact issue when you're driving on Landing Avenue, you know, coming up to this corner, which is heavily vegetated right now, and you don't even see the house, you're going to have a garage smacking you when you come down the road. So for your consideration. All right, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'm seeing no hands raised. Okay, fine, thank you. With that said, can I have a motion to close the application, please? Uh, did 
Does Bravo want to respond to any of the comments? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I appreciate that. So just um, to clarify on the construction of the garage, we did have a full set of plans on this. It requires a slab. They, there will be, you know, at least three feet or more of uh, continuous pour compacted fill. And yes, of course, they do commit to revegetating the area. Will they be as many, you know, mature trees as, as possible that they can save? Yes. We don't anticipate many, but um, if, if you want us to submit a, a plan for that, in addition to what's already been submitted, I, I sure that they would agree to that. All right, anything else? Um, no, that's it, thank you. Okay, fine, thank you. Uh, could I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried, thank you. Have a nice evening, bye-bye. You too. The next case on the agenda, case number 18684, J. Monroe, LLC, 2 White Avenue, St. James. The location of the property is the southwest corner of White Avenue and Sailor Street. The property is zoned R10. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum rear yard from 35 feet to 22 feet for a proposed 288 square foot second floor deck. Can I have the applicant, please? Yes, Jerry Chastain, number two, White Avenue, St. James. Um, are you the owner of the property? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, go ahead. Uh, again, could you state your name and address for the record, please? So. Yes, uh, I'll say my, my proper name is Gerard P. Chastain. Number two, White Avenue, St. James, New York, 11780. Fine. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm looking to uh, put on a 288 square foot deck on the back of my home. And I'm looking to reduce the rear side, the rear setback from 35 feet to 22 feet. I don't think it'd be a detriment to the area because there's other decks in the area on these high ranch style homes. Um, typically, there's no other way because your kitchen and dining room area are together and the proper, the best location for it would be out the back, right out of back sliding glass door, right to the deck so you can put your barbecue on and a table and chairs and so on and so forth. We don't think that the uh, request is too substantial because it is only 288 square feet. And um, I don't think it has any adverse uh, effects to the environment um, because this is kind of typical. And uh, it's created because our backyard is 34 feet and we're asking for a 12 foot deck. And when we bought this house, there was a big old deck that was very large and, and didn't make any sense. So uh, we ripped it down and now we're requesting a variance to do it, uh, you know, a smaller deck. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, is anyone, anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to be heard on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'm seeing no hands raised. Thank you. Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Blaze, before you start the next case, uh, for those of you that joined us uh, late, we do have two adjournments tonight. The first case was case 18650, Michael Ferry. That was adjourned to April 12th. And the second case was case 18680, Maria Riaz. 
that has been adjourned to April 26th. Okay, please. Okay. The next case on the agenda is case number 18685, Michael Legg, 1650 Acre Road, St. James. The location of the property is the east side of 50 Acre Road, 783 feet north of Edgewood Avenue. The property is zoned R21. The applicant is requesting variances to reduce the minimum rear yard, I'm sorry, minimum side yard from 16 feet to seven feet and to reduce the total side yards from 34 feet to 20 feet for an existing 222 square foot raised brick patio. Can I have the applicant, please? Hello, my name is Michael Legg, L-E-G-G-E, 16 F-I-F-T-Y, Acre Road, St. New York, 11780. Okay, thank you, Michael. All right, I'm representative. Uh, hi, uh, uh, representing Michael. This is Max Foreman with uh, Mancini Moy Architecture. Uh, the address is 222 Middle Country Road, Smithtown, New York, 11787, and it's suite 314. All right, Max, can you just spell your last name so we get it correct for the record, please? Uh, F O R E M A N. Okay, fine. And is there anyone else that's going to speak? No. No? Okay. Go ahead now. All right. So we think that um, we're not asking for anything too substantial here. Just, um, you know, variance to reduce the side yards. The brick patio is already built. Uh, it has no negative impact on the environment at all. Um, it's uh, below the uh, height threshold. So um, you can't see it anywhere. It's hidden behind um, front and side. Uh, a lot of fences and the house was already built um you know within the 16 foot kind of lot line limit anything else or is that it uh that's it <laughs> okay fine thank you is there anyone on the board of any questions on this application? No, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that like to be heard on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'm seeing no hands raised. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks. The next case on the agenda is case number 18686, Christos Raptus, 17 Camelot Lane, St. James. The location of the property is the north side of Camelot Lane, 209 feet east of Cambon Avenue. The property is zoned R10. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum rear yard from 50 feet to 47 feet for a proposed 42 square foot first floor addition. Can I have the applicant, please? Good evening, everyone. This is Christos and Marissa Raptis, 17 Camelot Lane, St. James, New York, 11780. Fine. Thank you. So we're looking to do um, a small kitchen addition to the rear of the house, a 21 by two cantilever, um, which would be a 42 square feet addition. It's like a bay window. So kind of like extending it. Um, the original L-shaped construction had some structural elements um, and other walls that restricted space from going anyplace else. So it would be the proposed is for an additional cantilevered overhang in the back of the house. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to be heard on this application? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'm not seeing any hands raised. Thank you. Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. 
Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening, everybody. Be well. You too. You too. The next case on the agenda, case number 18687, Evan and Paula Kastenbaum, 52 Annandale Road, Comac. The location of the property is the north side of Annandale Road, 1,758 feet west of Timber Ridge Drive. The property is owned R21. The applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the minimum front yard on a modified lot from 45 feet to 41 feet for proposed 221 square foot front porch. Can I have the applicant, please? Hi, Paula and Evan Kastenbaum here. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we grant Mary Ellen permission to speak on our behalf. Okay, fine. Mary Ellen? Mary Ellen Curtis, 22. Okay. North Creek Road, Northport, New York. Okay, fine. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Kirstenbaum are asking for relief to build a 230 square foot covered porch, which will start on the east side of the front of the house and extend to the front door, which is approximately 28.7 feet wide. The um, covered porch will extend into the front of the house, front yard setback, seven and a half feet, leaving 41 feet um, step back rather than 45 on the east side of the dwelling. The west side of the dwelling will remain at a 45 foot um, front yard setback. Uh, what they are asking for is within the character of the neighborhood and will not cause an undesirable change. This is a hardship due to the existing front yard setback, which was determined when the home was built. It is the person bound to uh, hope that the board will find in favor of their application. Are there any questions from the board? Yep, thank you. Does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? Thank you. Uh, planning? No, thank you. Is there anyone in the audience that like to be heard on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'm seeing no hands raised. All right, thank you, Jeff. Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? All right. Aye. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you much. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. you. Thank you. The next case on the agenda is case number 18674. GDF Realty LLC, 762 Smithtown Bypass, Wisconsin. The location of the property is the west side of Southern Boulevard, 100 feet north of Smithtown Bypass. The property is owned WSI. The applicant is requesting a modification of a special exception for a car wash in the WSI zoning district. Variance to reduce the minimum required parking from 23 to 17 spaces to increase the height of a ground sign from 15 feet to 17 feet, to permit a wall awning sign not to face a public street, and to permit a ground sign to be located on another tax parcel. Can I have the applicant, please? Hi, this is uh, Carmine Grasso from Cataldo Grasso Architects. Um, Looks like you're not hearing me. We can hear you. Oh, okay, great. Um, my uh, my client should be on on here, and he was going to, I guess, give you permission, give my permission to speak for him. Right. Okay. Um, don't is know he is on here though. <laughs> he said yeah, I'm on. on. I'm on. Oh, there you go. I'm on. Yeah. Hi. Okay, sir. Can you just state your name and address for the record, please? Sure, my name is Ignatius Scalavino, address 762 Smithtown Bypass, Smithtown, New York. Okay, and would you like this gentleman to speak on your behalf? Yes, sir. Fine. Carmine? 
Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, members of the board. Uh, my name is Carmine Grasso from Cataldo Grasso Architects, office at 14 Carl Avenue in Smithtown. Um, I'm resent uh, I submitted the affidavits of mailing and posting, and um, I'm representing uh, my client GDF Realty in their request for variances and a uh, modification of a special exception use for a car wash in the WSI zoning district. Um, I guess I'll start with the special exception first. Um, the car wash use has existed since 1976 at this site. And uh, right now we're only proposing very minor changes to the site on this uh, application. But because there is a change to the site, we, uh, we have to modify the special exception use, which is one of the reasons why we're here. Um, we're not proposing any changes to the building and um, the changes on the site are the addition of two uh, self-service pay kiosks as you pull into the uh, as you pull into the site and line up in the queue for the car wash um, there's a self-serve kiosk where you where you plug in what you want to what service you're looking for and then you go through the car wash um, so there's two of those at the back end of the site as you would see on the site plan and um, we're also proposing two, uh, four vacuums along the south side of the building, near, near the south wall of the building. Um, we feel that these are pretty minor changes to the existing car wash use and don't feel that there's any impact on the previously approved special exception use. Um, and onto the variances, um, this, pro this property itself was subject of a BZA case number 17743 back in September of 2018 um, by the previous car wash owner. Um, in that case, he had requested, they, they were looking to do a lot more work on the site. And part of that case also, he was requesting um, sign variances that is similar to what we're requesting tonight. Um, the sign variances that we were, that were requesting tonight are, were approved in a previous meeting. Um, the current awning signs that are there now, which have writing on them are going to be, um, as you can see in this, uh, in this photo that just came up where it says car wash in the blue awning, those awning signs, the awnings are going to remain. They're just going to be refaced with blank awnings. Um, they're gonna be yellow with a black, uh, a black uh, border on the bottom. Um, so there's going to be no writing on those signs and they're no longer going to be considered um, awning signs. We will maintain the existing car wash sign that's above that. That's, um, that's what we're requesting tonight. Um, we're requesting that we have the one, this sign here that you're looking at, which fit does not face a public right of way. They're just going to be refacing the, uh, the sign face. And then on the Southern Boulevard sign of the side of the building, the car wash sign, that's a wood sign that just says car wash on it, that's going to be painted uh, a different color. It's gonna be painted probably black, I believe. Um, this car wash sign that you see up on the, on the screen right now is the um, existing ground sign that's located off the property. It's located on the actual um, um, gas station property on the corner. That's existed for many years. Um, again, we're not looking to change the sign. We don't change anything about the sign other than the face. So it'll, it would look like this now. It would be a, a yellow face with black writing. Um, that's, the, that's the standard colors of, this, uh, of the car wash that we're going to be doing now. Um, the other variance that we're requesting is a parking variance. So we're requesting a um, relief from 23 spaces to 17 spaces. Um, Right now, there's actually less than 17 spaces on the site. So where what we're, what we're requesting is actually an increase in the um, existing parking. Um, and the car wash use itself obviously doesn't really need much in the way of parking because the people just go in there, they go to, go to the kiosk, they line up in the queue, go through the car wash, maybe do like they drive the car off at the, at the outside in, in the, uh, slots that are allotted for it and then they leave the site. So there's really nobody, not many people go there and park and go into the space. Um, there is parking, it's adequate parking for the employees though. Um, um, I understand I took, uh, the planning department has sent me over a copy of that PAR, um, which they are, um, they are recommending approval with some conditions. Um, we are in full agreement with, the, um, with their recommendations and we would abide by their um, requested conditions of removing the um, 
banner signs and all the all the uh, non-conforming signs that are on the site right now. Um, as far as the area variance requests go, um, it's not we're not um, we're not seeking a uh, change that would um, cause an uh, impact to the neighbor. The, excuse me, a rough night today. <laughs> uh, increasing or producing an impact to the character of the neighborhood. Um, the car wash has existed for many years and it's not going to change. Um, the benefit can't be sought by another alternative. Um, again, the signs are existing. They were approved previously and the parking is the maximum that we can fit on the lot. Um, there's not going to be a, an undesirable uh, impact to the environment. It's it, again, it's an existing use. So that's not changing. And um, whether the difficulty was self-created, uh, we feel that it wasn't, there's really no way to expand the parking on the property and there's really no way to change the way the signs are. So if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer. All right, thank you. Does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? No, thank you. No, thank you. All right, okay, planning. Uh, as Carmine noted, we did uh, prepare a planning advisory report. Mm -hmm. We did recommend approval of the application uh, pending a couple of conditions uh, that certain items on the site be removed. There was um, one item that we did not mention in the report. It was really an oversight. Uh, when you're looking at the site to the north uh, in between the car wash building and the property line, that's adjacent to the uh, King O'Rourke dealership. There is an area that runs along the length of the building. Um, there are parked cars there. There's some other items there. I would just say to the board, and you can certainly condition it if you wish, but certainly at the uh, site plan review level, there's probably gonna be some kind of a request that the area be cleaned up a little bit, maybe even greened up a little bit. Otherwise, we support the request. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to be heard on this application? Mr. Chairman, I'm not seeing hands raised at this time. All right. Thank you. Can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a great night. You too. The next case on the agenda, case number 18676, St. James Donuts, LLC, Dunkin' Donuts, 430 North Country Road, St. James. The location of the property is the southeast corner of North Country Road and Clinton Avenue. The property is zoned CB. The applicant is requesting variances to reduce the queuing lane setback from 50 feet to 48 feet. To reduce the setback of a menu board, to a residential district from 75 feet to 45 feet, to reduce the minimum parking from 211 to 149 spaces, to reduce the minimum parking setback to a residence district from 10 feet to six feet, to increase the maximum area of a ground sign from 32 square feet to 46 square feet, to increase the maximum number of ground signs per parcel from one to four. Can I have the applicant, please? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good evening, good evening, Chairman, board member of the board. Uh, my name is Mohinder Singh, S I N G H, 1778, Route 106, Sayaset, New York, 11791. Are you the owner, sir? I'm the lessee for this uh, Dunkin' Donuts. I'm the owner of the Dunkin' Donuts, yes. Oh, okay. Proceed. Go ahead. I would like to ask my engineer, Mr. Ishwan Kasuri, uh, to uh, speak on my behalf. And okay, I'll be problem. glad to answer anything later on if anybody has any questions. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Ishwar, E S H W A R, and the last name is K O S U R I. I'm their consultant for Mr. Mohinder Singh. Uh, I worked on this project. Um, trying to ease the burden ex exerted by the pandemic uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, 
Mr. Singh tried to convert, uh, we are planning on converting the existing Duncan donors to a drive-in uh, facility. And as a result, we designed a queuing lane, which unfortunately happens to fall short of two feet from the property line on the uh, uh, south side. So that's the number one the variance we're requesting from, from the board to grant us a variance from, 48, from 50 feet to 48 feet. The next variance we are requesting is the uh, setback of the menu board to the residential parcel located on the south, uh, on the east side. Um, this parcel is about 40, uh, 44 feet. Uh, and it's a heavily wooded area. The uh, existing house is a heavily wooded area and along with a, a fan, chain link fence and uh, a stockade fence. So, and in addition, the menu board faces the uh, uh, direction away from the residential parking, the residential uh, area. So we request a variance on that. And the third is to re request a variance from uh, decreasing the park parking spot from 211 to 149 spaces. As a result of the conversion of the uh, drive-in, I think, uh, uh, previously, the board has already approved 177 parking spots, and then we are, we are requesting to reduce it to 149 spaces. I would like to uh, request Mr. Singh to comment on the parking because has, he has witnessed over the period of time how the parking situation is at the uh, parcel. Good evening, everybody. Uh, so I have been there in this Dunkin' Donuts for past 10 years. And the parking lot in this shopping center is, uh, uh, there's plenty of spaces all the time. Uh, the biggest reason for this application is COVID changed everything. Uh, of course, we were affected uh, considerably as COVID hit, but thanks to the government, thanks to all the initiatives of the government that they that they did help us to carry this. Otherwise, uh, I don't know if we would have survived or not. One of the things that we learned from this is people want to have service with least uh, coming into the, inside the store. Uh, it is, you know, it, it gives more protection, more comfort to the people that they are more safe. It additionally, it helps all the young moms and moms with the kids it helps elderly, they don't have to come outside their car. So overall, we feel that this would ease the burden on the property uh, than anything else because people don't have to park their cars and go inside. And as I said, they usually the parking lot is very, very uh, not filled up. Uh, go ahead, Ishwar. Yes, and on uh, variance request number four, to reduce minimum parking setback from a residential dis district from 10 feet to six feet. This six feet is already existing. We are not being, making any changes on the south side. As you can see, there's a walkway over there and then we are not, that's already granted in the previous uh, applications. So I think that should not pose any harm detrimental to the application. And the next one is uh, the ground sign. The ground sign, these are all standard Duncan Donuts ground signs, which are pre-manufactured and pre-made. And, and that we, the ground sign, which we are requesting is 46 square feet. And we don't have any control of the ground signs. That's what Duncan Donuts request the ground, ground signs to be uh, visually uh, uh, presentable to, to the patrons. And in addition, the ground sign will be facing away from the residential parcel on the south side. I would like to add here on the ground signs. Uh, basically, if you see the signs, uh, two of them are directional. Then one of them is a height sign, just again is for safety. And the last one, which is the menu board sign, is the one which has the menu board and the speaker system on it. Uh, that one is, as Ishwar said, uh, very, uh, it's uh, Duncan standard. 
and the similar signs you would see in two other Dunkin' Donuts in the town of Split Town, one on 235 West Main Street, and the other one on 2073 Jericho Turnpike. Uh, say, uh, both are in the town. What of was the address? What was that? Sure, what was the, the second first, address? Second one is 2073 Jericho Turnpike, uh, Comac. Even though it's in Comac, it's in the town of Split Town. And they and the 235 West Main Street, also a Dunkin' Donuts on uh, Main Street in Smith Town, they have the same signs that we are recommending. Go ahead, Ishu. Yes. Um, the number of signs on the sixth variance request to increase the number of ground signs from a maximum of one to four. Again, I would like uh, Mr. Singh to comment on this existing signs and other facilities which he has noted. Go ahead, Singh. So as you see on the plans here, that uh, there's a first one is a drive through directional sign. The second one is a height sign, which uh, basically it's called a sign because it has written on it the dimensions that it's the height, nine feet or whatever the height is allowed. And that's why it's considered as a sign rather than a safety feature. And then the main standard menu board sign. And the last variance, that is to decrease the minimum setback for the menu board to a residential lot from 75 feet to 45 feet. Again, this menu board will be facing away from the residential parcel and there's no illumination directing towards the residential parcel. And I don't think there'll be any significant impact of the menu board on the residential parcel. All right. I, I have a question. How many cars are you going to be able to queue there? Is that seven cars? That is seven cars. Seven cars will be able to queue. Now, the first car, when they get the product, they go out. Um, they go out to the, yeah, out to the left. left. Yes. You're not going to be able to go to the right. No, they have to make a left onto North and proceed out to North Country Road. Yes. Okay, fine. Okay. All right, thank you. I mean, we try to maximize, uh, I mean, on, on the existing lot, we're trying to convert so that Duncan Dorans can survive at this place, you know, like uh, I'd rather see an active uh, place. Okay. Um, is it? Anyone on the board have any questions on this application? Uh, I have a question for you. On the ground signs, your request is from one to one per parcel to four. Uh, obviously, this is just one tenant in a multi tenant space. There are no other ground signs that are required on this site for any of the other tenants or for the center as a whole. So, what is there on the tenant right now is a main uh, sign outside. That's only one sign that it, for all the tenants. Uh, what we are, as I explained that what we are requesting, even though they're being requested as a ground sign, uh, actually we're putting just one menu board and the other one is a four feet directional sign. And the one uh, next to the menu board is basically for the protection of any safety feature so that the height of the car sign. So, um, it's uh, not any sign for advertising or anything like that. It is just for uh, uh, for the customer safety and for direction use. Yeah, that the height sign is just a, a safety feature so that the large trucks don't enter the sign. So it's uh, sort of uh, uh, restricted entrance to the drive-in facility. So, so you're asking for three signs. And the fourth sign is the, the one main ground sign that, that advertises all of the tenants. That, that correct? is correct. That yes. is correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else on the board have any questions on the application? No, thank you. No, thank you. Planning? No, thank you. No. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience like to be heard on this application? Yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we do have a hand raise. Um, they're listed as TV guests. Yep. Can you hear me? 
Hello? Hello. Uh, name's Tristan Valentino, residing at 42. Excuse, oh, go ahead. Ex excuse me. Yep. Uh, can you just introduce yourself, state your name, spell your last name so we get it correct, and give your address, please? Yes. <clears throat> My name is Tristan Valentino, V-A-L-E-N-T-I-N-O, residing at 42 Tillotson Avenue, which is directly on the south side there. Um, any other info? Did you, was that it? Or was that it? Okay. Um, so, so first, I just want to correct um, something that was said. The as you can go, if you can go back to that picture you just had up, uh, the south side is not heavily wooded. You can see straight straight through. There's nothing there, um, and I reside directly on the other side of that. Um, the the diagonal uh, line on your plan does uh, back up to a garden on the other side, but but I'm primarily concerned about that south side, which which as you can see is very very bare. Um, which leads into some of my initial concerns, which you know, there's, a, there's a few, right? Um, a few young kids um, primarily concerned about the uh, noise from speakers, which it sounds like you're saying that the speakers are going to face away from the residential area, which is good, but I'm still concerned about people yelling their orders, um, you know, and just the, the overall noise of that. So I'm curious if there's anything being done with either a wall behind the speaker or, or something to, to, you know, contain that sound. Um, also concerned about the traffic impact. Um, what was done with Starbucks was done pretty poorly, which is 100 feet, a few hundred feet away. Um, so uh, traffic quickly backs up onto North Country Road here. Um, so I'm concerned about you know dueling drive-throughs a few hundred feet away with any kind of uh, you know just the traffic impact there. Um, and then again, you know, and the, the signage, any lit signage, if that's going to be visible over that's, you know, that standard six, seven foot height fence, um, if that's going to be, you know, a permanent, you know, walk outside and see, you know, Dunkin' Donuts signs over the, over the fence. Um, so those are, you know, my primary concerns here. If, if not sure if anything's being done about, um, about, you know, primarily that, that noise factor in the trap and, you know, if there's been traffic studies done here to, uh, assess what that's going to be like. Okay, fine. Thank you. Yes. I think we have someone else, don't we? Yes, we do. Um, Mike Kozierski. Hi, that's um, my husband. Um, but this is Mary Beth Farrell, M-A-R-Y-B-E-T-H-F-A-R-R-E-L-L. -L. And we, we live at 53A Claremont Avenue, which is parallel um, on the other block. And uh, Tristan already mentioned what I was going to mention about the trees. They are no longer there. They used to be, but they're no longer there. Um, I have a concern about the people coming in on Clinton Avenue to go to the drive through because right now it's the only outlet to get to 25A and trying to head west, making a left from Clinton Avenue. You know, sometimes it's a big problem. And now you're going to have people who are going to be making a left onto Clinton to go into that entrance instead of the main entrance on, on 25A. And you're gonna, not going to be able to get out. And it's going to cause frustration and I, I think traffic jams. It's the, only, it's the only outlet for probably about six or seven blocks of people, not just, you know, people who live right there. Behind a commercial space. Oops. I'm sorry? I know someone else was speaking. Okay. Go ahead. And, Continue. Okay. Thank you. Also, if they're leaving through that drive, you know, they're heading behind the um, the strip mall, they'll have to go like all the way to the end. There's no break. And, um, and there's dumpsters and everything there. So I'm not sure how like, you know, cars are going to really fit through that. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about the parking, I know um, a couple of years ago when Del Fuego tried to to get some parking spaces eliminated, that was a big problem because the other uh, businesses in that shopping center were having a hard time. In fact, you know, they put up signs now, you know, 15 minute parking um, in the mornings and in the evenings, it's packed. So there might be some times during the middle of the day where there's open spaces, but in the mornings and the evenings, that parking lot is pretty full. So I disagreed with, you know, their, um, I'm sorry. Sorry, my husband was talking. 
All right. Uh, that's it. That's what I wanted to say. I just want I did I did send it in writing the other day. So okay, hopefully. fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank okay. You. Is there anyone else like to be heard on this? I believe we have another person, um, D. If you could unmute yourself, then we can hear you. Excuse me, D, you're muted at the moment. Is she having a problem? Is she having a problem? If you could hit the unmute button. Um, okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. okay. Diane Toto, TOTO 55 Claremont Avenue, St. James, New York. 11780. I agree the parking will be horrendous. And as you try to come out of Clinton on 25A, you will be faced with people parking on 25A. When you get trucks or anything else there, you have to pull out almost into the lane in order to get past there. I now go out many of the times being a little elderly. I go back out Northern Boulevard down to Woodlawn back out to 25A and then make my turn on to Edgewood. It's, it's a much longer path, but that's the way traffic is right now. You cannot get out there in the afternoons or the evenings. The parking spaces, like they said, Mary, if you look in the afternoon and the evenings, if you go to pick up a pizza or go to Del Flago to pick something up, there's not a spot to be had. So to lose 62 spots, is is unconscionable as far as I'm concerned. The noise level right now at two o'clock in the morning, we have people with boom boxes, cars coming with music. I mean, it's it's going to affect our lives. And I really am against this. All right, thank you. Is there anyone else that wants to be heard on this application? I'm seeing any other hands raised at the moment. Mr. Chairman, can I ask one more question of the applicant? Sure, go ahead. I don't know if it was brought up, but how, how many parking spaces are actually on the site right now? Right now, there are 176 parkings, uh, which from 211 to 176, and there has been a previous grant of uh, variance. So currently there's 176 parking, 176, 177. So we'll be losing about 27 spaces over what you have right currently. That, that is, is correct. correct. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I would like to point out one other thing though. Mr. One, one, Chairman, one, like... one second, I'll, I'll bring you back to answer everybody's concerns. But I want to see if there's anyone else in the waiting room before we do that. Okay? Not to cut you off, I apologize. No, thank you. Uh, Jeff, is there anyone else there? Um, I do not see any other hands raised. Once again, if you would like to speak, you have to hit the raise hand button, which is at the bottom of your screen under the reactions tab. Um, but right now, I'm not seeing any other hands. Okay, fine. I'll bring you back and you could try to answer some of the concerns that the uh, neighbors have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to uh, ask Mr. Singh to emphasize by converting to a drive-in facility, I think the parking situation will be elevated completely or to a greater extent though. We did not do a traffic study, but I think at other locations which uh, Mr. Singh owns in Comac and uh, at, at 235 West Main Street. I think he can talk a little bit more about the drive-in aspect of the Dunkin' Donuts. Sure. Uh, so this is Mohinder Singh. I'm back here again. So I did hear uh, uh, the notes and I made some notes here. So I'll, I'll try to address them one by one this way. First biggest thing is we are here for the community. First, we want to thank the community that support us. We want to do things that are good for the community. And 
So I did see um, the points that were brought up. Uh, first one is about the vis visible or less of uh, uh, some bushes behind our store, which touch the pre uh, adjacent property. If there is need be, we can always accommodate to put some more vegetation so that it should protect. It, it is best for our neighbors to be happy to have us there rather than vice versa. So we will do that, that we, if there is, uh, we can put some vegetation there to protect that. Like we explained, the noise is, it's a standard menu board. We are not putting anything that is uh, out of sort. It's it's the standard uh, menu board with the noise, uh, voice uh, uh, sound levels of which are in every municipality. Uh, however, our goal is again, it is, in this uh, particular uh, application, as uh, Ishwar said, it is away from the household, so it, it, is, it would not be noted. Uh, second thing about Starbucks traffic count or drive-through, ours is in the opposite direction. And believe me, uh, us getting a variance approved for this application would ease the traffic on North Country Road because some people are going uh, uh, in the uh, other direction. We are in the other direction. Uh, some people do not come to us because of the lack of convenience of drive through. And again, it is for the whole community. It is a convenience that will uh, help the community and help us as a business. Uh, then there was another point, uh, noise I addressed. As, uh, what, what are your hours of operation, sir? Yes, very good point. That's what I was thinking. So yes, so we right now we close at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m but we can close at 9 p.m. and we don't want to, so this way there is no uh, sound, uh, 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 adverse sound. Uh, so we are we are willing to close nine, whatever is uh, fair, uh, whatever is right for the community, we are willing to work with the community. Okay, so you're not open 24 hours a day? No, no. Okay. And uh, let's see, illumination. Are any of these signs illuminated or? Uh, the, uh, they are, uh, the, they are uh, illuminated just for the sense of, so somebody can read the menu board. It's not for illuminating the area or the anything else. It is, it is just for people to be able to read, let's say the, if it says the drive through directional sign, it will have very nominal light. So people could direct and go in or out in the, uh, in the nighttime or in the dark when the, when the uh, environment gets darker. And the menu board is facing away, whatever little light it has, it has for the uh, reading of the menu and it's away from the households. Okay, so none of your signs are gonna be projecting any kind of light into the neighbors. That is correct. That, that is, is correct. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, these are all standard Dunkin' Donuts signs. They're not specially made for this site. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Good evening. Uh, can, I have, can I have a motion to close the application, please? No moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. The next case on the agenda, case number 18677, Maria Dzetsky, 48 Columbine Lane, Kings Park. Location of the property is the north side of Columbine Lane, 102 feet south of Jasmine Lane. The property is owned R10. The applicant is requesting a special exception for, to permit temporary living quarters for family members. A variance of a special exception standard to increase the size of the living quarters from 674 square feet to 976 square feet. A variance of a special exception standard to permit living quarters not to be economical or practical to be converted back to a single family dwelling. Now the applicant please. Hi, I'm Maria Zadensky at 48 Columbine Lane, Kings Park, New York, 11754. I'm here with my husband, Jason Zadensky, also. Okay, we'll both fine. be Thank speaking. You. Good evening. Good evening. 
So, uh, all right. So this is a request for Marie's mother who will be uh, living with us. Uh, we're looking to increase from 674 to 976. Um, on our end, there's gonna be no economical gain. It's, it's gonna be uh, just her uh, living there. Currently we have three children. Um, so house is getting a little tight as it is. So we're looking to expand a little bit more, get some more space. Um, we have our architect, Ralph Michelle, who should be also on the Zoom. Um, I know he wanted to add a couple of things. If that's okay with you. That'd be fine. Okay. Hello, my name is Ralph Michelle. I'm uh, I'm the designer for the project, um, and I can Ralph, discuss Ralph, anything you guys. Just can. Ralph, just state your name. Give your address, please, for the record. Ralph Michelle, M I C H E L E, and Seven Old Landers Court, Smithtown, New York, one one seven eight seven. Thank you. Um, I'm the I'm the designer of the uh, the addition. Okay. Um, so we are keeping the the addition within the setbacks. Uh, the front yard setback is 40 feet, so that corner will be at 40.1. That will be the entrance uh, to get into the uh, the the temporary living quarters. Uh, so if this was just a standard addition to a home, we would be uh, accommodating all these setbacks. Uh, the big difference though, in this point is that it would be the temporary living quarters for the, the, uh, for the mom to be living at the house with them. Uh, and then we also will be getting, having access to get into the house through the garage. Uh, it is a two height space. So you'll see on the first floor there, the shared, there's a door going into, um, a, you know, vestibule area that has the bathroom and, um, a washer dryer that will be shared by the family uh, and the mom. And then you can go through the main part of the garage to get into the existing uh, family room and access the rest of the house. Uh, there are stairs in the one, the, the two-story addition uh, for the bedroom upstairs on the second floor. Um, and it's up against the existing exterior wall of the house. So the, on the other side would be, is the master bedroom, master walk-in closet. So there is an access from the existing second floor to get into the, the proposed second floor. Is there any other questions? All right, right. I will ask, Cole. I will ask. Thank you. Uh, does anyone on the board have any questions on this application? Did you say there is or there is not access from the second floor? There is not access. Okay, thank you. Anyone else on the board have any questions? No, thank you. Planning? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. So uh, planning did prepare a planning advisory report. Based on our review of the application, we did recommend approval. I would like to address the variance of the special exception standard about the uh, temporary living quarters not being practical or economical to convert back to a single family dwelling. If you look at the floor plans that are on the screen for the first floor, you'll see that there is uh, a doorway that goes from the uh, kitchen of the temporary living quarters into what's now the existing garage. If the uh, door leading into the existing family room were slid, I guess, I'm not sure what direction that would be. If we're facing north, I guess that would be to the west. Uh, one single wall could be constructed uh, whereby you could walk through the laundry room, walk through an enclosed hallway and into the door into the existing family room. The fact that there is no access to the second floor from the bedroom, uh, Matt, if you could go to the second floor, just to, so we can show that. Uh, there is a, a staircase that goes from the first floor to the second floor. So as long as you have access, at least at one point, whether it be on the first or second floor, uh, you basically can utilize the space as if it were a single family home. All right, thank you. Anything else, please? That's it. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience that'd like to be heard on this application? Chairman, I'm not seeing any other hands raised at this time. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, can I have a motion to close the application, please? So moved. Second. Motion has been made to close the application. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody.
Thank you. you. Good night. <clears throat> The next case on the agenda is case number 18683, 189 Main Street KP LLC, 189 Main Street Kings Park, the location of the property, the southwest corner, I believe that should say southeast corner of Main Street, uh, Route 25A and Park Avenue. The property is zoned CV. The applicant is requesting a certificate of existing use for a filling station a variance to permit an accessory structure in the required yard and to reduce the minimum front yard setback from 10 feet to zero for a proposed 1,276 square foot fuel canopy. A variance to reduce the minimum parking from 19 to four spaces, a variance to reduce the minimum parking setback from the front property line from six feet to zero and to reduce the minimum landscaped area from 5% to 0% of the lot. Do I have the applicant, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman, John Armentano. I'm an attorney with Farrell Fritz. We represent the applicant. I also have with me Gino Tedesco from r &M Engineering, who will be speaking to the technical points of the application if that is necessary. Okay, fine. As you, uh, as you are aware, this site, I have, if I can share my screen, I know we submitted some information, but I, if I could, that's, that's great. Um, if I could share my screen, I will take you through a, uh, the application booklet. Yes, you can. As you, as you know, this is a, an existing gas station in, in Kings Park. It has been here since the 1940s. It well predates a majority of the zoning code requirements that were put in place at that time. This is, a, this is an aerial view showing you the location of the property. The main reason we're here tonight is to request certain area variances to allow for the an overhead canopy for the fuel uh, dispensing facilities. Right now there is nothing on site and it is typical the, uh, now that major oil companies when they deliver you know for the brands that are selling gas at these gas stations they want to have these standard canopies over the fuel pump station for a variety of reasons. One is to show their their brand, the other is to obviously protect you during the rain and the inclement weather. So the main purpose of this application is, is for that overhead canopy, which is, is here. We have a rendering of that. This is the, this is an architectural rendering. Um, I cannot properly see the screen. Could you um, move it to the side? That better? No. No. <laughs> Let me see if that's. Uh... There you go. Okay. I'm not sure why that happened. So I'll be looking. I have two screens. So this is the canopy that we're installing on the site. It is a standard canopy that will be utilized at the site. As you're aware the, of the existing conditions at the site, you can see, are these screenshots clear to you? Can you see this is an, uh, a site photo? Yes. So this is the current configuration of the site. As you are familiar with it, these are just shots of the subject property. You'll notice proximity to Main Street, it's a uniquely configured site. It's a very small site. It's been subject to very road widenings in the, in, the, in the past, therefore limiting its usable frontage. This is a, a uh, shot looking to the, to the west. Well, these are the existing conditions. We believe this will be a major improvement to the site for a variety of reasons. And 
the main issue here is is to allow for the canopy to be installed on the site. Give me more photographs of the sites. The other issue that was raised is this is we're also seeking area variances and a CEU, that's the certificate for existing use. The reason we are seeking that, and this is a property record card, and I, I will share more information on this. This was submitted with our application. It does show the age and the use of this property. You know, this use has been in existence since the 40s. These property record cards do reflect that. There was a there was a renovation in 1955. Obviously, this is a site that's been here for a long time. We're not changing the actual existing conditions of the site. The use here is no longer permitted by a recent zone change uh, back past back in 2020, which no longer allows for filling stations on CB zoned property. So that's that's the reason for the CEU. You know, in my opinion, we only have to prove to establish our pre-existing non-conforming status, which is required for the CEU. That requirement really only should extend back until the zone change back in nine, uh, 2020, when the code changed to no longer allow a filling station to be a permitted use. With that being said, we have ample evidence indicating and proving the existing use of a gas station back into the into the 1940s. I have a property record card that I'll share in a moment. What I also have included in this in this packet is a decision by this board back in March of 2011, where the applicant was requesting and received an approval for the sign for variance for the sign height that is on site today. It's a 20 foot sign. We're going to be modifying that with, as part of this application. But at that time in 2011, it was zoned CB district. The uses that were there, the parking that was utilized was there at that time. I think this is another indication of, of the town approving the uses as they were in 2011. I was going to share another screen just to give you the property record card. If, so you'll note this is the property record card provided by the town. The important I think date here is at the bottom of this, where my cursor is in, in July of 1946, there was an addition. Can you see that sock? Can you see this proper record card? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So this permit 376 approved the addition of the gas, an addition to the gas station in 1946. So, so we, I think have amply proven the age of this facility and it's, and it's prior uses and it's existing and continuing use. You know, at this time, we are also requiring certain area variances, which, as I've said, I think we have established were approved by this board when it was looking at the sign variance because the site was being utilized as it was at that time. We are also aware of the, and I just received it this late this afternoon, a staff PAR report, and I just wanted to address there are certain conditions that we're not prepared to agree with at this time. I, I would like to address that with the board and I, I think it might be in the best interest of, I mean, we are recommending that we continue this hearing to address these comments. One of the, one of the comments that it was raised is the removal of, and I'll be sharing this next document. There are, if you can see that screen. Can you flip it? Yeah, oh, there, you go. there you go. I think this is the existing conditions that we have. As you may be aware, there are two ice machines located in the rear of the property. The staff report is requesting and making it a condition that these ice machines be moved uh, for a variety of reasons, not, not the least of which is this is a major source of income for the site. This, these ice machines are standard and common throughout the town at most gas stations. The, the staff report indicated that this is a, a, a prohibited outdoor storage. I would disagree with that and that with that um, definition. This is not outdoor storage. We are not, I mean, this is obviously a retail device which is selling ice at the 
at the gas station, the code itself provides for in its definitions that there are accessory convenience sales, which are permitted as accessory to filling stations. I would argue that these ice machines are that fit within that definition and therefore are not outdoor storage, but are obviously the accessory convenience sale of ice. As you are aware, this is a small building. It doesn't have the ability really to bring in these types of machines into the, into the building. This has been an in existence for decades. Like I said, it's a common accessory use to most gas stations in the town. It is screened by uh, the, the PVC fencing. We are more than willing to screen these further, but there is there's no reason that this use cannot continue. I would argue that this also falls under the CEU application in that these uses were common and at the time not prohibited by the town board or the town zoning code um, prior to the change in the zoning district. The other, so this is just another photograph. Can I just ask you, can I ask you a question on, on that photo? Yes. What was that taken? This was from Google Earth. Uh, it's got to be 2019. It's it's okay. when it was a Bolero site. It's it had nothing has changed. I mean, if you're familiar with the site, I have. I was at the site, and they are still in that location. No, I understand. I was at the site this morning too. Okay. And there's no grass there. That's all paved, paved, and there's cars right up, right up to the uh, street. No, that's correct. This I was. This was a picture. I had this is the best picture I could get at the time for the ice machines that I am aware of, and that's part of our our photographic evidence. Is yes, these are paved at this time. Okay. Well, one of the other comments that was raised in the staff report was the removal of. I can let me go back to the other screen. Right, this this is I'll blow this up. This is the same location that, that we were just looking at that angle. So there there is grass here. It's not the same configuration of grass. There is a grass median. I don't know if you can see that in the photograph. These are the ice machines. But there there is a grass median here, which is part of what would staff would like to be revegetated or, or further vegetated. So just to, to focus in on that question that you had previously. The the other item that staff was requesting is that the outdoor car lift be removed from the site. That's another item and it, that is basically in this location here. You can see the, oh, the crossbar, you can see my cursor. This is an operational use item for the for the owner and the and the occupants. I, this is another item I'd like to address with staff as to how best we can configure this and, and possibly re reutilize it. Another comment from staff, was, you know, having and I'll pull up. This is the it's all paved as we all know. This site has been paved for for a number of years. One of the comments, I want to share this screen. From staff, this is the staff report. They're recommending certain levels of, of greenery on the site. I think we need to consider a limitation on this. I understand the, how we would want to soften the use here. I, I think this is definitely a viable location for planting on the on the west side, as well as this area in the back, we can soften that, which is where the ice dispensaries are. And then we can obviously soften the use here along the south side of the property. You know, again, I, I think, well, we would like to revisit this with staff. You know, there's not a lot of landscaping area that's available to this site. Again, the real purpose here is to maintain the status quo. We have our status as a pre-existing non-conforming use dates back into the 40s. I think that goes a long way in saying that certain certain code requirements now are not as applicable to, to sites like this. I think the granting of the CU 
render some of these superfluous. I'm not saying that the applicant doesn't want to do this, but this is the first time we're seeing it. And I, I spoke with my clients at five o'clock about this. So we would like to, we, we'd like to visit this with staff to consider how best we can address the town's concerns and at the same time balance the operational uses of the site. There are obviously parking variances that are required. Again, I think that falls under the category of the CEU, but you know, existing conditions have been in this situation for four decades. Uh, the site does operate and function well. It has a, a, a flow of traffic for use. There's not a lot of car parking required here. And I believe staff, uh, the staff report was in agreement with the reductions in the requirements for the, the, the codes parking requirements. That's my presentation for the board. We're obviously available to answer any questions. I have my uh, engineer available as well to discuss any technical points. All right, I, I have a question. Uh, 2011, you were giving a variance for 20 foot sign. I think the proposed um, structure that you're planning to put over the pumps is 19 feet, two inches. What, yeah. are, you with, what are you gonna do with the sign? So the sign will be removed. That that is the sign will come down and the canopy will function as the signage. So the canopy, as staff notes, is we are proposing at 19 feet. You know, the requirement of 18 feet is acceptable to us, but that that pylon sign will be removed. Uh, It'll be removed, and you're gonna put the signage right on the canopy? Correct. It'll be on the front of the canopy. Okay. That is correct. All right. Anyone else on the board have any questions? Um, what's the canopy look like? I saw an elevation there for a second, but it wasn't real detailed. Yep, hold on, let me get to that. It's similar, I, I mean, the design is architectural, but this is the general idea, it's a pitched roof. Uh, or, or it may be flat. It's, it's typical of the one you see now on Edgewood in Saint uh, in Smithtown. There's on the connection of uh, Middle Island, uh, Middle Country Road, and Edgewood. There is a similarly situated. I think believe it's a gulf canopy. Uh, what is, that? is that canopy shingled? I'd have to check. I I'm not sure. I don't know. I only bring it up because it, you know obviously a zero foot setback on the canopy is is substantial, um, and anything that mitigates the impact visual impact of that canopy obviously goes a long way to garnering some approval on this board. Obviously, the better it looks, the more inclined someone would be to approve it. Well, I'll definitely take that back to my client. If there's a, if that if the shingling is what the board is looking for, I'm sure we can make that happen. I, I think we all want it to be attractive as well. I mean, it is a business, so I think they want they will want it to be attractive as well. Right. And my only other question was, uh, are you proposing any facade upgrades with this application? They are not proposed at this time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? How do you fun yes, so how do you function with only four going from 19 parking spaces to four? Well, again, 19 is the code requirement. Yeah. Right, right. And this we predate a majority of the code requirements. The site itself, this is a gas station. It's it's really limited in, in the parking. It's access for the gas. And then as generally is common, you park your car, get your gas, and then you run in to get whatever supplies you might need. It's a very small convenience store as well. There's not a lot of parking and the cars are left for the, for the gas station intent, you know, to handle them. So we are, you know, we don't believe that this is a substantial variance, although numerically it sounds substantial. The issue is the site has functioned for decades with this as it's operational standard and I believe we predate the code requirements for that type of parking relief. I believe staff is in agreement with that request and I just got an email from my clients the they will uh, the canopy is shingled. So if we want to as I said we're going to have we request this matter be continued. I can get colorized architecturals to show you that at the at the next meeting. I think that'll help also bring up your level of comfort for the look of this application. Thank you. I see on the plan slate gray as the shingle color. Right. Any other questions? Okay. 
Any, yeah. any, anyone else on the board have any questions? No, thank you. Planning? Just a couple of things, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I would just like to clarify for Mr. Armentano. In the uh, memo that planning prepared for the board, we did not refer to the ice machines as outdoor storage. They are referred to as outdoor sales and display. And if you look under chapter 322, 82C, number seven, which is the special exception requirements for filling stations and repair garages, you will note under that section, it says there shall be no outdoor sales and display of items. And that is why it's recommended that the ice machines be removed. Uh, Mr. Armentano did bring up a very interesting point uh, just a moment ago that we were not aware of because there are uh, no supporting documentation in the application uh, that indicated that this was going to be the case. Uh, he had mentioned that the applicant is uh, proposing to remove the existing ground sign and place signage on the fuel canopy. As the board is aware, signage on a canopy is prohibited under the code. If they wish to move forward with a proposal to put signage on the canopy, the board will have to hold the uh, meeting open uh, with an adjournment so that they can come back with revised plans showing the proposed signage. That's fine. I, to your point, I understand what you're stating. And as if that is the situation, I do believe this matter should be continued. We can also con remove that concept and work with a ground style sign to be more in keeping with the code. I just wanted to also add to that point of the special permit requirements. You know, I do think that the you were referring to a special permit requirement. We cannot fit within that special permit requirement because that code provision is no longer available in the zoning district. That's why the CEU is the application that we're seeking. Just so we're clear for the record. Okay. Uh, I understand what you're saying. Um, we're saying that the use itself, the filling station and the repair garage, the uses are eligible for a CEU because they do predate the requirement for a building permit or a certificate of occupancy. However, the accessory items on the site are still subject to current zoning requirements. Unless you have a photo that shows ice machines on the side of the building sometime pre-1947. Understood. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so you are going to redo your plans and then come back to us, right? That is what you'd like to do. Yes, in certain ways, yes. Meet with staff and work on the conditions and correct, yes. Okay, okay fine. Now we, we have a number of people that would like to speak. Um, we're going to adjourn this meeting probably to May 10th. Uh, Does that give to... Mr. Armentano enough time to prepare or do you need a little more time? I think May 10th is fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, for everybody that's here now, do you want to speak now and then come back on the 10th and speak again when you see the new plans or what would you like to do? I mean, I'd like to hear from the public so we can modify our plans. I think it would be helpful for, for Okay, for fine. Time. Yes. Okay. May I comment? All right, Jeff. If we send them in, who do we have? All right, so... First, um, I see uh, Kristen uh, uh, Mateka. Um, you said you would like to comment. Yes, okay. please. Uh, hey, go ahead. Could you, could you introduce yourself, please? State your name, spell your last name, and give your address, please, for the record. Sure. My name is Kristen Mateka, K R I S T E N M A T E J K A, Four Park Avenue, Kings Park, New York. Uh, and I do have some additional questions regarding the. I'm concerned about the reduced parking. So may I ask, they're keeping the repair station open, but want to reduce the parking? Uh, yeah, I'll, I can answer if you'd like. Yes, the, the repair station as it exists will continue. And are you talking about reducing the parking for the re repair station and the gas station to four spaces? 
the four spaces are all that are available on site. There has never been the availability of excessive parking on this site. Right, and my concern right now is, is there's an, you know, an undesirable effect as there is with parking all over the streets, um, on the side streets, on 25A. It is a, it's, it's a dangerous situation. Um, it creates, um, you know, there's cars that come speeding into town there. I'm sure everybody knows this. There's a lot of accidents and near misses in this area. I'm concerned about the reduced parking because where would, where would the additional parking go besides on the street? All right. Why don't we make a list of everybody's questions and then we'll bring the applicant back to okay. answer them. All right. So your question is parking right now. Do you have any others? Yes, I do. Um, are they increasing the number of pumps? Okay. Are they changing the hours? And will this be, you know, right now, this is a neighborhood service station. It's a small neighborhood service station. And I'm con concerned, are they converting it to a 24-hour national chain that will have, you know, lights on all night? I'm concerned about the lighting, the lighting on the signs. There's a quality of life issue right now. Uh, those lights stay on pretty much all night. I, I don't, I don't say up that too late, but I don't think they shut off at night. Okay. So I'm concerned. Will, the, will there be additional lighting on that canopy? Which way will the sign be facing? You know, is it a lit sign? Is it going to be facing into the neighborhoods? Uh, I, I live on the north side, so, you know, I, I get a full view of the night and the lights there at night. And, and they create an adverse effect on the neighborhood. Um, the other concern I had was with the reduced landscaping. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's very little landscaping now as there is, and to reduce it down to zero is really out of character with the wooded and residential surrounding area. I support the board's uh, proposal to add more vegetation as opposed to reducing vegetation there to make it more in line with the existing area. And um, my uh, last question is, I was concerned with the reduced setback. That is only for the canopy, not for the uh, driving area. It, it It's concerning to me that there are you know, there's very little setback there, especially the way cars come speeding to town. We who live here know it and have many of us have been involved with accidents in that area. And, you know, it's concerning the way the cars come speeding into town and there's no barriers, there's no landscaping, trees, you know, anything to kind of block a potential, you know, real disaster there. Um, and I do have one more comment that while I support the the increased vegetation there, I, I feel like that would make it more con conducive to the downtown redevelopment in terms of aesthetics, pedestrian safety. Um, and I, I just would you know ask that to be taken into consideration too, that we are undergoing a downtown revitalization. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, who's next? All right, um, next, why don't we have... Uh... Mr. Thomas Delaney. Thomas. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. My name is Thomas Delaney. I live about three houses away from the gas station at 53 Park Avenue. Uh, I have been having issues with parking from the gas station on my block for years. Eventually, the cars get parked on the street, whether they're customers' cars and whether it's a mechanic having to just check something or change an air filter. Next thing you know, I'm looking out my front door and I see people working on cars in front of the house. So Mr. Armentado's Tano's pictures actually show up perfectly just how many cars are parked in that parking lot on a regular basis. I went to work last night at 9 p.m. and I came home this morning at 6.30 in the morning and there was no less than 16 cars still in the lot. So if parking is decreased, uh, those cars are going to be on the streets on a regular basis. In the daytime, it goes upwards of 30 cars. His pictures also show perfectly that's not all pavement in front of that gas station. That is actually a sidewalk where the color changes, and his pictures show 
that their cars are actually parked on the sidewalk and Park Avenue for the entire south side of Main Street going to the west. Park Avenue is the first block that leads out to Main Street to utilize the sidewalk to walk to Main Street. Just last evening, I was out picking my son up. Three or four people were walking down Main Street, and they were actually walking on the white shoulder line because they couldn't walk on the sidewalk because the cars were parked on the sidewalk. So 20 to 30 cars every night being parked there, and during the day, those cars have to go somewhere, and the traffic flow is no good. The cars come from the west. They go east on Main Street, and they cut diagonally across Park Avenue to pull into the gas pumps. Whether you're coming up Park Avenue to make a left or a right, you better be watching and be careful that someone's not trying to come into the gas station or make a U-turn from westbound 25A to get into the gas pumps. That is my two cents. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Who's next? And next, um, we're gonna have uh, Regina Kempster, if you'd like to say something. Okay, Regina. Yes, thank you. Regina and Ken Kempster, K-E-M-P-S-T-E-R. We are located at 36 Park Avenue, just four houses away from the gas station. Uh, really, our concerns have already been addressed. Uh, definitely concern of the parking space. Uh, there currently is no parking for somebody to pull in and go to into the shop, per se, as was represented uh, to go pick up a supply or whatnot. It is a full um, utilized space with vehicles everywhere. And my other concern, of course, was also the walkway. Um, again, as you've seen in the pictures, there is a car that's on the walkway. We make it regularly. Uh, we walk into town and we are always having troubles to get through that area because there are vehicles either parked in the street, parked on the sidewalk, or next to the gas pumps. So my concern of making the six foot down to zero feet, uh, solidifying that I will never have a walkway to walk by. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, who's next? All right, um, next, um, Terrence, if you'd like to say something. Uh, sir, you're unmuted at the moment. If you just hit unmute, then we can hear you. Hi, my name's I'm Terrence sure Ryan, R-Y-A-N. I live at 8 Park Avenue. I've lived in this house for about 40 years. I've had numerous dealings with that gas station. They used to park the uh, cars on uh, North Park Avenue. They, to the extent that uh, some people thought it was a park and ride. They would have people subcontracting to do uh, glass work on my street. Uh, I've been involved in an accident where the gas station parked cars both in front of the gas station on the roadway. I was making a left and a car coming down the hill going east on 25A could not go around me and rear-ended me. This is these, this, uh, a no-standing sign in front of that gas station. I have had myself had that replaced three times. Most of the traffic that comes into the gas station to get gas comes from the west. You cannot come from the east and pull in and get gas without creating a serious hazard. The cars coming down that hill are coming, they try to mitigate the speed of that hill, but they were unsuccessful. Cars are coming down that hill at about 45 miles an hour. They pull into the gas station. They're doing really fast. The fact that this there's four bays in that gas station and that outside lift, that is a great amount of cars that have to be serviced. The employees parked on 25A. I don't know how one of them hasn't been killed yet because it is a very busy road. This awning is going to be very tight on that property. He's got a not enough room to put that there. Any awnings I've seen on service stations usually do not involve repair units. 
They are just put there so that customers can pull in without getting rained or snowed on. And it's usually in a self-service mode. This cannot be a self-service mode. There's got to be a gas pump attendant, which there is now. But regardless of which is that this is an overextension of that property. There's no way that this can awning can go on that property and have more room rather than less. Reducing those parking spaces is just pumping those cars right onto the street. And in, and in the past, if this owner chooses to ignore or even uh, subjugate the law to get his accomplishments done, he will do so. Those three no standing signs did not get taken by extraterrestrials. They were knocked down deliberately. And I, I dread to fear what, what this awning would do to the neighborhood and the surrounding people in it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, who's next? How you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. All right. My name's Doug Roski. I live at 49 Park Avenue, last name is Roski, R-O-S-K-E. Uh, I've been living there since 1996. I am very well aware about the, uh, the station, uh, the situation. Like other residents have said, uh, the parking for the service station does extend down Park Avenue and the parallel street that's on the other side of the gas station uh, is a hazard, as one uh, neighbor had said. Uh, we're there to live, there's kids, there's a hazard. You have people changing and working on cars. In the past, uh, I understand the gas station's been there since 1940, but let's all agree that uh, everything has evolved since then. Uh, people coming down 25A uh, East to come into the gas station, like the other gentleman said, they're not doing 20 miles an hour. They are blocking Park Avenue from 25A. People can't get into Park Avenue. They can't get out of Park Avenue. There has been numerous accidents. You guys can look it up yourselves. Uh, and where are all these parking spots going to go? If we had problems with 19 parking spots and then parking on residential roads and doing repairs, what is that going to go now? Uh, very little. Uh, the ice machines, there is no PVC fence around the ice machine. If anybody went out there today, they could see that that's just false. Uh, as the one gentleman said, you can't walk down the sidewalk because somebody's always parked on the sidewalk. So you either have to walk through the gas station parking lot or in a road, which everybody knows 25 A is uh, not the safest road. And depending on rush hour, it's not, it's not very, well, like I said, it's not safe for kids, families, or elderly people. So what is this person's, where are they going to park these cars? Uh, and like the other individual said, are these signs going to be up 24-7 with the light, the light pollution? I mean, Kings Park is a small community. Everybody, as you know, in Smithtown, we enjoy where we live. Uh, we don't need to be you know, woken up in the middle of the night by neon signs. So if somebody could answer me that question, maybe we can get somewhere. As of now, I'm 1000% against it. I, I don't think the previous owner uh, did anything better than what this person's going to do because those were previous problems and I'm sure it's not gonna get any better. You make it more commercialized for a residential 
little hometown area. Uh, honestly, I think it's undetectable, and you know that's my saying. And as the right. other gentleman said, and that's my two cents. Okay, thank you very much. I You're think, welcome. Uh, quite welcome. I uh, think we have another person who'd like to speak. Jeff, we have anybody else? Um, Mr. Chairman, the hands that I see raised are um, Jake, uh, JC Armentano and iPhone. Uh, he just spoke. Okay, he already spoke. So, yeah, so unless there's anybody else, um, then I think that's it. Okay, fine. Just so everybody knows, I'm going to bring back the applicant to answer some of your concerns right now. Hopefully, he has enough information. He's going to go back to the drawing board. They're going to come back oh. May 10th. Hey, that quickly, what? Hello? Who's that? Jeff, is that someone that wants to speak? I, yeah, I believe that was uh, some excess noise coming through. Okay. So I'm going to bring the applicant back to answer some of your concerns that he can right now. I think you gave him enough information. He's going to go back to the drawing board do what he can, and he's going to come back here on May 10th for another presentation, okay? And uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, would you like to answer some of their concerns? Yes, thank you. And we do appreciate the concerns of the community. Uh, just so they're aware, this is under new ownership, so it is not the former owner that is operating the site, just so, we, so we're clear for the record. And I can answer some, but obviously not all of your questions. In terms of the number of pumps, the number of pumps are not changing. We are merely putting the canopy over the existing pump islands, so there will be no change in the number of pumps. The hours of operation will not be changing. This is it will operate under its existing hours of operation. The lighting of the canopy will, in keeping with the town's requirements for lighting, we're not going to be excessively lighting this. It's, there is not going to be neon signage. This is going to be a very, what I believe, a muted. You did look to a to to the um, canopy. The setbacks again are for the canopy itself. The location of the canopy is within the front yard setback. That is the only setback we're seeking a variance for. And in terms of the parking issues, I will take that back to the to the ownership and discuss with them the use on the site. The other comments and concerns are, are well taken. And like I said, we're going to go back and improve this site. And I would also offer you the opportunity if we can possibly set up a meeting beforehand to, uh, to discuss this, that might be useful as well. So or I'll leave my information. It's, it's on the application. So if people wanted to contact me, we can try to address that as well. You also have landscaping on your list, correct? Yes, landscaping is. And that's what I'm, we're going to have to work with the applicant as to how best we can accommodate interests okay. and needs here. Okay, fine. Okay, with that said, uh, there's no action, no action on this. And this has been adjourned to May 10th. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And that ends our meeting for tonight.